god, look at that sky. <laughs> this is the only way to go down this. Now then, we're out in the Peak District again. This time, it's not one night of wild camping, it's two. We just got off the train in Bamford. We're now heading up to Wynn Hill. Um, I'll show you the OS maps of that little section. The plan is to head on up to Kinder Scout from where we are and find somewhere to camp. We, we may just camp in the wool packs just because I know it quite well. Um, the reason I want to stick to some familiar Ality, familiarity is the fact that it's going to snow quite a lot um, for 12 hours or something like that so I'm really excited for it I'm not worried at all but just knowing where we are might be a bit of a added strength but yeah I'm with with Jack again trying out the uh, the world's lightest trekking poles I'm also trying them just because if I'm carrying them, I may as well give them a bit of a bash. Just having a little break on a little bench here. Sort of taking note from quite a few videos I've watched where they said to take 10 minutes every hour, but I'm breaking it up because the first section is quite uphill. So we're going to have like half an hour, have a five minute break, and that's just a I don't know, rest and get the blood flowing back to the areas that might have been constricted by a bag or anything like that. Conditions today look, look really nice, it's, it's overcast but it's not too bright. The rain isn't forecast to come at all, it was it was raining a lot last night and we're sort of seeing that as we're walking up this trail. Um, well I mean, <laughs> I don't know if you can see that but it's fairly muddy. We've just done this little section from Fawn Hill, like Bamford to Wynn Hill via Fawn Hill. There's a nature reserve in that, and it's extremely muddy. We tried to go off of the path and onto a, uh, well, a path that we thought would be easier, but then that was just covered in brambles and slippy. Uh, but bringing the trekking poles today has made such a huge difference. We've been able to stay on my feet. There's, yeah, so many times there where slipping was so bad without those, I probably would have been on the floor. <laughs> You're not even drinking. We are in Wynn Hill plantation now. Wind Hill is literally just behind us. We're not going up it today, we're going to go around it and along. It's, it's like 16 kilometres anyway, so it's still a fairly big trek and I've got five litres of water, Jack's got four and a half litres of water. I do have a, a water filtration thing with Bob, but um, I've done it before and drank the water up there before and it's um, it's got a thing in it, I can't remember what it's called, but it just it just makes it, it it's safe, the water's safe, but um, comes out in like an orange hue and that just makes me a little bit <laughs> on edge about how my body might feel the next day.
I've just got about eight kilometers into the walk. I have no idea what that is in miles. Some maths whiz can work that out. But we've passed Winnill big time now. And we're heading up over there. Don't know if I'm pointing the right way. But I think the sooner we see like a suitable camp spot, we're just going to take it. The wind's pretty nippy. It's, it's not freezing or out. It's just, uh, yeah, I'm just excited to get my tent, to be honest. Got a new tent, so stay tuned for that. Nature's calling for Jack, so we won't see him for 10 minutes. <laughs> That's wild camping for you, I suppose. Uh, we just sat down and had something to eat. Flapjack and a pepper army. That last final push up there. Really excited about getting my tent out, my quilt. Just getting cosy. Got some new meals that I got from Go Outdoors that I've never tried before, like a completely different brand. Um, some of those sound exceptionally fancy. So, I mean, we're talking salmon. Not really sure how I feel about that. You know, freeze dried salmon, but if it works, it works, and uh, I'm quite hungry already. So, that'll be good. This is the water issue I was telling you about. Uh, we're out here for two and a bit days, so I've got five litres of water, a little bit less now because I've been going through it a bit, and unfortunately I wasn't able to get any two litre bottles, so I literally have five plastic bottles, which is a problem. I mean, hiking generally is a lot of plastic involved, and um, I want to be a lot more, I don't know, conscious of that, so... When I'm doing these bigger trips, I'm going to get like a, a Nalgene or some sort of reusable two litre bottle. Because the this pack's awesome because the side pockets are huge. So I could easily slot in a two litre bottle there, then a two litre bottle there, and then I could just have like a little bottle like this to drink from during the day. But yeah, I think as campers, we do have a bit of an issue with plastic. I mean, everything I'm wearing is some sort of polymer um, it's a weird juxtaposition as well because I'm out here because I love nature and it is and I've seen people comment before not on my videos just generally it's a plastic holiday um, I get that I really do but also at the same time I'm, I'm doing this you know by going on the train and walking or something like that. I'm not, you know, I'm not paying to get a plane which, you know, uses thousands and gallons of fuel. I mean, it's not a comparison, it's just, you know, something I, I want to be more knowledgeable about how I can do my bit to make sure that this stays the way it does. Made our way slowly up the hill quite a, a steady way up but it's lovely because you've got this side of the peaks where it's like Lady Bower and uh, Derwin Edge and you've got this side of the peaks which is the Great Ridge so it's a lovely part now I'm almost certain this is a part of the um, Edale Skyline route it's like 20 miles going around um, the skyline essentially so do the Great Ridge. I'm not sure if you go to Windhill, possibly. It sounds feasible within 20 miles. Well, and then Kinder skin as well. Right, we found our spot for the night, we just sort of stumbled upon it. We didn't quite get to the top of the Kinder Plateau because let me get a better perspective of this spot for you. Like a cliff face there, fairly flat spot, 
bits and bobs of sheep remains. Um, but yeah, uh, this looks probably as good as we're gonna get, so let's get the tent set up. I have no idea if the tents were in shot then. <laughs> really hope they were. So yeah, this is my new tent. Ultra light. Well, it's not ultra light, it's light. It's a Durston X Mid 1. I don't know which generation it is, but not really bothered. This is my first real pitch. If you follow me on Instagram, you'll know that I've already done it once. The ground's slightly uneven, but the tent looks fine to me. Just gonna show you our view. So, we were actually over by those woods walking along it for some time. Um, and then we've got a view of the, the Great Ridge, but you can't really make it out well on this camera. Everything looks a lot closer than it is. But over there, Oh, over there is Mantor, there's Back Tor, and then there's Lose Hill, and then there's Wind Hill, which we were at earlier. And we're going to be camping over there in a couple of weeks' time. So, amazing stuff. We've got wind coming from this direction, but we're dipped down slightly, which makes things even better for us. We've got a bit of snow coming, so we'll just try our best to manage with that. Jack's got his freestanding tent with him, it's the MSR Hubba Bubba NX, I believe. Is it Hubba Bubba? Or is it just a Hubba? I don't know. <laughs> don't know. But yeah, that's, that's what he's in tonight. I've brought a new quilt. That quilt's rated for minus one. I don't know if I've already told you this or not. but. I'm gonna be testing that out and I've got a spare sleeping bag just in case it's a bit too cold for me. So yeah, I'm gonna get my stuff in my tent but I wanna spend as much time outside as possible because we've got quite a nice evening. Um, these cool little sort of rocky areas. Um, if you don't like bones of animal remains, I'd look away now but we have some, actually I'm not gonna look, I'm not going to show you. There's vertebrae that I'm trying to show you without so the rocks we could sit on later vertebrae is down here don't want to spook anyone with that but a little boulder field I'm guessing from what's fallen off there hopefully many many years ago yeah awesome little spot that, from this angle you can see it a lot better that we are protected really well from the wind now this is a spot that I now know if I come here in adverse weather. Yeah, I, I can't believe I found this. It's, it's amazing. Bloody brilliant. What do you think, Jack? It's spot? I like it. It's, it's good, isn't it? I just don't like how soft the ground is. Is the ground really soft? To me. Should wait till you go up Kinder Scout and we camp up there, mate. I mean, I guess we kind of are on Kinder Scout, but. Yeah. Feeling the uh, <laughs> cold a bit now. Um, we're just having a bit of a cup of coffee, a brew, and then uh, that should warm us up to set our tents up and uh, yeah, be nice and cosy for the evening. Cheers. Well, show us the uh, the one we're drinking, mate, so people know know what it is. This cafe, three in one. Original. I'm ready for this. Cheers. 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 It's a brew part two. 
the sun is setting. And it looks like a good one, but we're not in a great spot to see it, unfortunately. But we are in a good spot to see the sunrise, so... God, look at that sky! Wowza! Beautiful! This is an amazing spot. I can't believe we just stumbled upon it. I think as well, I was sort of pointing at this from over there thinking, oh, that looks like an interesting little place to go. Gosh, there's a little kestrel. I don't know if you can see it on the camera, but been flying around these rocks. Maybe this is where he lives. It's not changed much, but you can see the little hill that we're just camping in this little dip. Apparently we're gonna have some uh, fairly full on uh, wind tonight. So that little dip should protect us quite well. I think Met Office was saying something like 50, but where we are, we're not going to feel a thing, so it's really nice to have like a little spot that I know of that I can come to if the weather's really bad. God, it's a bit chilly though, I must say. Wow. It's amazing. Got this little windometer thing online. It's about 13 kilometers an hour and 3.2 degrees. But look at that bloody sky, isn't that beautiful? Wow. We're lucky, aren't we? This spot's so special just because of the amount of like iconic parts of the Peak District you can see from it. Now, obviously there's the Great Ridge which is massively popular and rightly so. Uh, then we've got Wind Hill, I'm shocking isn't it? Wind Hill over there, if I'm pointing out on camera I'm not sure. And then we've got this hill over here, there's two little lumps there, I can't remember the name of them. And then we can likely see like Stanage and Derwent and maybe even Bamford Edge from here I mean obviously we can't see Kinder but we, we, I mean we're basically on Kinder um, but when you're looking at Kinder there's not, often not <laughs> really all that much to see because it's such a, a flat one yeah, we, we don't really have any plans about what this trip's about. It did initially start off as like a, a Pennine Way, a couple of days on the Pennine Way, uh, but that changed just because a couple of time constraints. Um, so now, sort of open to anything. We're here tonight, obviously, and then tomorrow night. I, know, I mean, our range is currently about like 10 to 15 kilometers. We've got you know, an extra five kilograms on top of all of our gear because uh, the water but Bleaklow is possibly the next stop but that, that is a, a fair walk from here um, so we'll just see how we get on as well it depends how bad it snows tonight but if it snows really heavily I mean we'll have to see how it, how it is but it might make it quite difficult to navigate which is a fun challenge but we need to make sure what we're doing is safe Yeah, really. Well, I just, I just feel really lucky to be here. It's such an awesome spot. I think as well when you just stumble upon somewhere when you're wild camping, and you think, "Whoa!" I mean, I've not seen this spot before. It's most definitely been used before. Um, I mean, there's, there's no litter or anything, but you can just see it's like the perfect spot to camp. I mean, minus the dead sheep, which is so. I mean, it's scattered everywhere. I don't know what's happened to it. I kind of think maybe it, it like swelled up and exploded because, I mean, those rocks over there is where I said that vertebrae was. I'm over here 
and there's something that looks a bit like a rip. There's a big patch over there where there's loads of fur, so I'm guessing that's where the main body was. But even all the way down there, when I went over there to show you the sunset, there's another bit over there. And that's a bit more they're talking about this, but it's quite light. I don't know, is it the wind? Is it animals? I don't know. Maybe something's coming to get us. It's a bad omen. Oh, it's cold. Quite nippy on the hands. I've brought some gloves and I'll uh, definitely be using them at some point. Uh, Thurston. Brilliant. The vestibules are huge. Perfect tent, I think, if you had a, an animal. Um, I, I mean, I've not pitched it amazingly, and I'll show you why I'm saying that. See, this side here is a bit saggy, but this spot is a bit dipped, and I'm wondering if that being put there is the reason for that sagging a bit. It's not an issue, I'm not bothered. Um, but yeah, I'm excited for my first night in it. On the menu tonight, we've got a um, pasta al fungi and minced beef hot pot. I just randomly chose them out of the four I've got, so hopefully, it's a nutritious meal. You don't need to, but I don't know, just fancy to. Quite cold, definitely gonna want to tomorrow in that weather. Um, I don't know what the plan is, but we might. Uh, jump down into Edale, maybe go to a pub or a cafe or something, maybe it just depends on the weather is really. But yeah, I'm just letting these cook in about eight minutes, so let them do their thing. Here's the mushroom pasta. That pasta was lovely, I'll definitely have it again. Now we're starting on the hot pot. I really didn't expect that consistency, I don't know why, it's like mashed potato. It's it's nice, but it's nowhere near as nice as this. This was really nice. Yeah, I just had that hot pot. Nowhere near as nice as the uh, the pasta. And that might just be because it's so much easier to dry pasta. I mean, pasta's already dry, isn't it? Um, but yeah, the taste of that was beautiful. Hot pot, not so much. So, pasta, 10 out of 10. Definitely have it again. I'm doing this for myself, I need to know what's good. Hot pot, 5 out of 10, mate, don't bother. Doing some uh, Spanish lessons while I'm in the tent. Because I'm planning on doing the Camino de Santiago next year. So I just spent about, I don't know, half an hour. Well, I didn't do anything. I just put my camera outside for half an hour and the battery died. And that's what that uh, five seconds of video is that you've just seen. Um, it's the stars, basically. I wanted to see how it worked. And um, I think I need a full battery to have a proper go at it. I think it had 40% when I started recording that, so... <laughs> That's ridiculous. Um, yeah, it looks cool though. I'd be looking forward to do that again. When I've got the tripod out, it'll be cool to do one with the uh, with the tent in the video. That'd be awesome. Uh, yeah, definitely something I'll be looking into. I've uh, I've got my sleeping bag out. My uh, what's it called? My uh, quilt is just underneath it, so I've got a bit. Of, double layer in action going on it is really cold um maybe that's another reason why the battery died um yeah we're due snow at about eight o'clock tomorrow morning so it might be a bit of a slow start tomorrow might maybe even stay in bed till about 10 o'clock but we'll see how we get on there's no rush i think the plan might be to drop down into hope because hope's like not too far from where we are now. I've not ever really been to any of the cafes around there. So that'd be quite cool to check out. Um, 
but we'll, we'll go and camp somewhere else tomorrow night. It might be up Kinder, which is just sort of where we are, but a bit further that way. We'll just, uh, just play it by here and see how we get on. Brew part four. Is it part four? Is that fourth brew? Part three. Part three, third brew at day. We've only brought six each and we're out here for another day and a half, so that'll be jokes. <laughs> <laughs> Lovely still. I don't know if you can see all the steam, but a bit misty. Not sure how good this is for me, Tim. Yes, I am very cosy. Alright, guys, I'm heading to bed now. I uh, did a couple time lapse videos. Every five seconds is like 10 minutes. So that's like. <sighs> can't do mass bit over an hour and a half of recording in 10 seconds didn't work out as good as it could but you know tried tried it out and uh hopefully i'll perfect it uh gonna get some sleep now and hopefully we'll wake up to a bit of snow i don't know if you can tell by the color of my tent but the sunrise is amazing It'll be a tiny bit warm in my tent than it is outside. Oh, I'm breathing like that. It is at 1.8 or 1.1 or something. Uh, yeah. I'm very snug in my two sleeping bag. Well, two quilt set up, so I'm not getting out. But <laughs> that sky looked lovely. Um, uh, very cold. Just gonna chill and uh, yeah, I don't really know. Kind of gonna wait till about eight just to see if it does snow or not. It still says it's going to, so it should do. But if it doesn't, that's just weather reports for you. <laughs> so there is actually a tiny bit of snow that's come under my tent and. Um, Got onto my coat and it's not good. There. I think that happened during the night because I've not noticed it this morning. And then you can see Jack's tent's frozen over, but that's where his things inside have been content, I believe. The outside wall. Um, yeah, there's a lot like there's a lot of snow knocking about. It's bloody cold though. <sighs> I didn't peg that door out. I mean, it's open because I was looking at the sunrise, but um, I should definitely do that. I think pegging out as much as you can in this tent is probably the best idea just to. I don't know. Make sure it doesn't flop in. Like the top of my sleeping bag was a bit wet. It's really condensation inside the tent. We've had a bit of that snow that was forecast. It's not coming down crazy quick, but um, we've had a quick sort of a uh, little burst of it let me just show you outside snow's just sort of plodding along it's not you know doing anything crazy we're just getting brew on the go. I'll just jump out my tent while I'm having my coffee and uh, it's massively come down while I were in there. You can't really tell when you're between the two tents. But 
tent's non existent now. Oh, blimey. Well, I got what I asked for. Uh, there's no views, obviously, because of all the snow. But wow. Oh, beautiful. Hello. <laughs> so. As beautiful as the snow is, it's now sort of uh, brought down the visibility massively and um, basically changed our plans, I suppose, a bit. We can't see a lot, the visibility is pretty shocking, so I think the idea is just to chill here and sort of reassess the situation. Um, the weather's, well, I'm saying it's not going to stop really, so we've got enough supplies to be up here another day. And it's supposed to chill out tomorrow, so you know, we, we might just literally be here for another day. And I know that probably doesn't make for the most exciting of videos, but you've got to be safe, haven't you? And um, I think that's a this is going to be a big part of it. A bit of an issue with my guy uh, with this side of my tent, I forgot to uh, stick a peg in it basically, and um, the snow's making it sag so. I very much could do with another peg. I'm gonna steal one from Jack's tent, which he already stole from me. It's not, yeah. Right, cool. Give you an update in a bit. But I'll give you a little weather update. I just hit the weather and, um, it says it's gonna snow till about four o'clock. So that's another many, many hours. So the plan, as I said, I don't know if I've already said it, might be just to stay here tonight. Um, we've got some food that should last us till tomorrow. Jack, have you got enough food to last you till tomorrow? Yeah. yeah. So we've got some food that lasts us till tomorrow. Uh, we've got two coffees left that we can have throughout the day. And then tomorrow morning, it's snowing. <laughs> till uh oh god four o'clock so it may be that we just bite the bullet tomorrow morning and just run to train station we're not too far from hope so and there's a train station there so that should be fine currently it says it's minus one um i'm not too sure if it is or not i'm in my tent not in my sleeping bag and i feel warm enough so yeah i have just had a coffee though so it might be a part of it so I've had another think about the situation. Just been chilling here in my sleeping bag um, on my phone listening to the snow, but with it snowing the rest of today and then most of tomorrow, it might be best if we do leave today because I'm not sure how deep the snow's gonna get. And I'm in trail runners for one. Um, yeah, I think we would be fine if we stayed here. It's just, there's not an awful lot we can do here because the snow is so heavy. So, just had a flapjack, and now I'm going to have a uh, like a warm, dehydrated meal, um, and just yeah, slowly make our way down. It's like ten o'clock, so we've got ages. So as you can see, the, uh, the snow is coming quite a lot, and uh, it's supposed to continue snowing for like the next like eight or so hours, and then a tiny break, and then it's just going to snow again for the next full day. So that's sort of the reasoning for packing up. Just erring on the side of caution, really. You know, we're not in any danger, but I don't really know. Well, I do. I do know this area quite well, but. Just want to stay safe and it's very cold so 
there's no rush like we're gonna really take our time with it probably get to the train station about three o'clock but we're not gonna camp up here again tonight but you definitely could this is an awesome spot I'll most certainly be coming back here again um, I think we're gonna walk across the top of Kinder to get to Edale I think that's the fastest route to any sort of part of civilization although it's probably not the safest of routes but I've had a walk about around here and it's not too slippy and we've got our trekking poles, we've got gloves, we've got plenty of warm gear so it'll be fine such a nice spot, I can't believe we found it I mean over there you'd have beautiful views but not really a lot to see is there <laughs> at the moment look at that I can't actually see if you can see our tent sort of Oh yeah. <laughs> Pew! As you can see, we're leaving the campsite behind now and slowly heading up this hill to find our way back to Edo. My feet are a bit cold. I guess that's what happens when you were trail runners in winter. Must say I'm not really sure where I'm going. So I'm gonna focus on that for a bit. Being the uh, first person to walk on this fresh snow is a bit of a treat, but at the same time, you can't see the floor and kinder being a peat bog every now and then, I uh, sink a little. I mean, I knew the weather before I was gonna set off camping. Um, I knew it was gonna snow. I didn't know it was gonna snow for this long, but, you know, I'm still happy of the outcome. I'm really happy that I'm up Kinder Scout in the freshest snow you could ever have. Just having a brilliant time. Um, yeah, I guess it is a shame we didn't get to stay out another night, but it is what it is. And yeah, that's been brilliant. I can only imagine this is what the Cairngorms is like, or like, you know, any other part of the world that's cold but it's so exposed we've not seen a single person while we've been up here uh, I mean it, it is still whoa okay. yeah, yeah it is still fairly early on but yeah what an experience this is but I, if you know the Peak District or if you know England or the UK it, the snow does come a few times a year but it is a to me it's a bit of a, tre a treat, especially when it's this fresh. When it's in the sea, it gets very sludgy very quickly. In relation to where we are, I'm not actually sure. I'm just sort of heading the way I believe is right. Um, hopefully we'll see some sort of landmark, but as you can see, there's no real views going on. like a sheep or something's been walking on this path.
<laughs> all right, mate. <laughs> I didn't think you were asleep. No, I didn't think you were watching me. I want to make a sushi. So, well, congrats, it's there. Uh, making our way down now. I was gonna go a different way, but my map's found a route that's about, well, it's less than half the distance. But when you're up Kinder Scout and a route's less than half the distance, it probably means there's a massive downhill section somewhere coming up. Um, so yeah, just need to be really careful now. Yeah. <laughs> The only way to go down this. <laughs> what should this land? Oh, fair enough. <laughs> I feel like I should join him. <laughs> Chuffing hell, that was steep. I went, oh fuck. I went down on my uh, marble manole. But, but I guess, yeah, we did chose this. End up coming the steepest way down. Let's see if Jack falls down again. I almost fell there. I'm gonna get out of the way in case he does. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> I just sit right down there, mate. <laughs> As to durability of it, mate. Oh, yeah. If you try to get that ill die, you can just do that. <laughs> Alright, crack on, mate. We've got, we got a train to get if we're still running. <laughs> oh, my God. Now we've finally come out of the uh, quag. You can see loads. The snow is absolutely covered. It's funny, it sort of stops in the valley. There's no snow there, and then. You'll see as it gets higher and higher, snow gets thicker. Very nice. Right, I'm gonna conclude, conclude that there. I just took a massive fall. Um, I don't know if you can see it, but I just went flat on my back, like just slipped straight from underneath me. Uh, that's what it's like coming down when it's wet and snowy, I suppose. But God, what an experience this has been. Um, it would have been great to stay up there longer, but. Yeah, I think it's, it was best that we came down. I think just coming down today when there's not as much snow as there will be tomorrow, uh, that was enough of a challenge, so yeah. I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, if you're already subscribed, I love you to bits. Uh, thank you for being here and, and watching this far. If you're not subscribed, I, I say this every time, if you've got this far in the video, you may as well. So yeah. Thanks very much for watching and I'll see you next time.